Good morning. Good morning. I hope everybody's doing well this morning. First, we'd like to welcome our special guest, Reverend Jake Carey and his wife. We're glad to have you with us this morning. Thank you for being here. What other announcements do we have this morning? The Ty Dunbar is having open heart surgery this week on Wednesday. We're going to have three or four bypasses. So let's be in prayer for Ty Dunbar. I know uh, Reverend Kay was by the uh, Haywood this week. Uh, I think yeah. the Friday or Saturday, and I went by the yeah. next day, and she was uh, able to talk with us, uh, and she needed your prayer. The family is here. You want to add to that? Yeah. Um, right now, she's in hospice care at home, and she is she has conscience, so she's she recognizes people, yeah. but sometimes not. So, but physically, um, she's doing okay, but slowly going down. So I just encourage you to visit her personally, or you can just send a card. So yeah, all right. Let's be in prayer for Liam and her entire family. What other announcements do we have? Yeah, I'd like to thank the church for the prayers. I'm really much better. Thank you. Good. Glad to have you back. Patty, did you have something? Yes. Um, we've done the shoe boxes. Thank you, everyone, for your donations. Uh, we're, we're done with the um, cleaning buckets, too. But don't forget our three Christmas ornaments for the women in faith. $5 to Laura and Amy. Uh, anyone that's in the Jimmy, anyone that's in the group. And you can get that the memorial card in line. Thank you. So there is a um, flyer made with a piece of tree, so you can pick it up from the back. All right, there's a flyer on the desk. Any other announcements? I'd like to thank everybody in the college and well wishing that I received. Congratulations on your big birthday, Melissa. <laughs> Laura. This is the last night for the youth dinner and guardrail series. Um, it isn't any huge year, is it? We're having spaghetti and eyeballs. <laughs> I really enjoyed Laura making me dinner every Sunday. I know, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> and again, thanks to the leaders who made all that possible. It's been a fantastic series for our youth for the last, uh, last version is tonight. And then we'll be tackling our Christmas production. All right. Please see me if you'd like a part. There is um, adult as well as youth parts. I think I saw Robert's hand going. I was told to just go ahead and sign. I did see it going on. See, yeah, see, no, I see it. Yours as well, Cal. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to recognize me. That. Um, the reminder that the, the, the town is. is uh, having a trunk or treat tomorrow. They're hoping for good weather to be in the parking lot behind the old high school or behind the town office uh, for the kids. Uh, and uh, hope that we have a quiet and uh, peaceful and successful uh, trick or treat. All right, trunk or treat tomorrow night. Uh, do you want to And do you get the um, new date for the spirit fundraiser? Never. Thank you. No, we, 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 the stew we had planned, the, the supplies did not arrive, and without the supplies, we could not even begin to have the stew, so we decided to hold off right now for quite a while. All right, that's the Lunenburg County Ministry. Yes, we have to back off for that one. You'll notify us when there's another day. All right. All right. Let's begin our worship service. Please join me on our opening prayer. God of our salvation. You are the source of wisdom and joy. Your love and mercies are not limited to one time or to one person. But we thank you for your life-giving and spirit-renewing blessings for our, on our lives. Dear Lord Jesus, as we begin our worship this morning, we welcome you amongst us and seek your holy presence, not only at this place, but also in our hearts. So your spirit may open our ears to hear your voice open our minds and spirit to receive your eternal wisdom and to know you deeper and better. Thank you, God, and thank you, Lord. Come and be with us.
transform us. We ask all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
scripture we're reading for this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 38 through 50. Teacher said to John, said John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we told him to stop, because he was not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said. For no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is not for us. <coughs> Truly I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup, cup of water in my name, because you belong to the Messiah, will suddenly not lose their reward. If anyone holds one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them if they lost my, my millstone which hung around their neck, and they were thrown into the sea. If your hand calls you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than with two hands to go into hell, where the fire never goes out. And if you, your foot calls you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to eternal, enter life Crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where the worms that eat them do not die, and the fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Have salt among yourselves, and be at peace with each other. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. I pray with me. You pray with me. God of love and God of grace, we pray in your holy name for your saving grace through your Son, Jesus Christ. God, now I pray that your Spirit opens our hearts, fill us with your love, and feed us with the bread of the eternal word. God, send us your Spirit, and help us to humble ourselves before your living truth, and to obey and follow your way of life as the people of faith. Make the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our Redeemer, our peace and joy. Amen. Well, this morning I'm beginning my sermon with some hesitancy. Well, it is because I was not sure how you received the scripture passage read today. As meditating the passage and preparing this song and preaching this past week, I was feeling a little bit awkward. Yeah. Because my Jesus and what he said were a little strange. Here he doesn't look like a loving and, and gentle and kind person that I've been knowing. It seems like he doesn't gently encourage or persuade us to follow this way either. He only speaks in a very ornament way to enforce his do's and don'ts to us. He talks straight up about the extreme things like self-mutilation and being thrown into hell in many times. What's happening here? The first thing we can immediately notice is that Jesus is really serious today. Like in a school, a teacher who is usually very kind and generous when they find something wrong in the students and come to the classroom with a serious face, yes, today is that kind of day to be his disciples. And look here, Jesus is telling us something very heavy and grave, so what shall we do? Well, I gotta tell you, we better listen to him carefully today. Today, the words of Jesus are not just solemn, but also difficult to understand. I personally had a hard time to figure out the meanings, and I had to read them over and over again to get to the core. In today's Gospel reading, I think Jesus primarily talks about two things that are made title, two rules of discipleship. During past 
three Sundays, I emphasized and explained about the importance of Christian discipleship and, and what possible mistakes we can make in our faith journey. Our identity as Christ followers shows what God has done for us through Christ Jesus. And it is all about our life transformation and with purpose and about continuation of shaping and growing in faith. However, I have compared two different type, types of <coughs> following as a fan of Christ Jesus and as a follower of Christ Jesus in order to give you some warnings with potential traps we easily fall into. And today I'd like to share with you about a little more detailed guideline as we grow and mature as Christ followers to the scripture text. I guess there might be more important rules that Christ followers should keep in mind and practicing as mandatory, like the greatest commandment, loving God and loving our neighbors as ourselves, and the great commission from the Matthew's Gospel. But today I'd like to introduce a kind of theoretical attitude or rules as we continue our discipleship journey. Having this in mind, I remember a funny meme I saw from one of my friend's Facebook post, which is about two rules of business, and I found I found it quite useful for us today as well. Two rules of business. First, mind your own. And second, say the hell out of mind. I guess this is funny and, and sort of sarcastic. Maybe my friend was having a bad day when he posted this. I understand and get that. Anyway, let me use this meme to summarize the two rules of discipleship that Jesus is teaching us today. So, there you go. Two rules of discipleship. First one is the same, mind your own. The second one is a little different, stay out of the head. Now let's look into rule number one, mind your own. Mind your own business and stop meddling in others' businesses. Jesus is clear on this in today's Gospel story. Here, the disciples encounter a person casting out demons in Jesus' name. Where does this person come from? The disciples were so surprised because right before they met this person and they failed to cast out unclean spirits from a troubled child. In verse 17 and 18, a man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that hath, has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes wicked. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. The killing miracle that this name this person does in Jesus' name is exactly what Jesus' disciples could not accomplish. Getting so frustrated and jealous, they, the disciples go to Jesus and tell about this person to him right away. Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. Can you feel the disciples? They are talking to Jesus now like, Lord, we are your followers, we are your disciples. But that person is not. That person is not authorized to do such healing business in your name. That kind of business should remain exclusive only for your disciples, only for your followers. To them, Jesus replied back, don't stop others to perform God's work in my name. Whoever is not against us is for us, and whoever do a little thing in my name will never lose the reward. So don't put any stumbling block before the little ones who just start to believe with me. In short, 
Jesus is saying to the disciples, mind your own business. Yes, Jesus was asking the disciples, and also he, Jesus is asking us today to be more mindful of our own discipleship as followers of his. It is because in the end, it's all about us as individuals standing all alone before God. Nobody else. So we better not waste of our time looking at the others and saying this and that, but we better mind our own ways to follow Jesus. How true it is. And if we try to be more mindful of our, of our own discipleship, what should we do? How should we do? From where we should begin? Now we may go over to discipleship rule number two. Stay out of town. That sounds simple and easy, but for Jesus, staying out of hell means a serious and, and ceaseless practice to identify and remove any stumbling blocks from us. And these stumbling blocks may be so deeply entrenched in our lives, like our body parts, they are they're very hard to be taken away. But here Jesus definitively says, it's better to enter life without one hand, without one foot, without one eye, than to have whole body and be thrown into the fires of hell. And actually, in the original gospel text, Jesus does not really use the word hell, but rather he uses the Aramaic name of a place called Gehenna. This was a this was an actual place called the Valley of Hinnom outside the walls of Jerusalem. According to Jeremiah chapter 7 and chapter 19, centuries before the time of Jesus, Gehenna had been the place of idol worship, where some of the kings of Judah even sacrificed their children by fire to the Canaanite God. And thereafter, Gehenna became a place where dead bodies of criminals, dead animals, and all manners of refuse were thrown, we decayed, and destroyed. So by the time of Jesus, it was kind of the town dump, filled with burning gar garbage and flesh. It was a des desolate place, utterly filthy and, and repulsive to nose and eyes of people. Because when Jesus mentions hell here, he actually talks about the place like rubbish heap of Gehenna. With this, Jesus held how Jesus radically confronts his disciples as follows. If your life would end up being dumped out in a place like Gehenna, what would you do to avoid it? You would do whatever you can do. You may even choose to let go of some part of your body than to be thrown in the first darkness. Your life is precious. You are created in God's image and not destined for the ashy heap of the world. So what can what can you discard in order not to risk of discarding your entire life? Dumb. Whatever that makes you stumble before your whole life gets dumped. That's how you can stay out of hell. <coughs> Sisters and brothers in Christ, to be true disciples of Jesus is not easy. There are many distractions on our way. We sometimes get tired of getting no reward. We sometimes don't like our fellow disciples. We sometimes compare ourselves to others and become frustrated or jealous. At these moments, let us remember this section rule number one, mind of your own. Yes, we better be mindful of our own discipleship always, because discipleship truly is about the personal relationship between us and Jesus. And because in the end, you and I will stand all alone before God, nobody else. 
on our way to be faithful followers of Jesus, we also get to find many stumbling blocks embedded in our lives. Our big or small addictions and negative habits, our unresolved anger and emotional wounds, our troubled intentions, misled by the spirit of our days and our desire controlled by culture of this world. Physical, mental, spiritual, social, and cultural stumbling blocks keep us from moving forward. At this moment, let us remember discipleship rule number two. Stay out of hell. We better choose life in Jesus and try our best to discard the stumbling blocks rather than to have our whole life discarded. We need to keep battling against death. Mind your own discipleship and stay out of hell. As we strive to keep these two rules in our lives as followers of Christ, I hope and pray that we may get closer to Jesus day by day, that we may experience more freedom from unwanted and unnecessary stumbling blocks, and we may become more alive and more able in Jesus Christ. May God bless us all and lead our ways to the true disciples always. Amen. The friends, our centering hymn is 454. Open my eyes that I may see. We stand if you're able.
doing our prayer for our offerings and also I'd like for you to join me a blessing for the Christmas tree box and our our way. Oh Lord God, we want to follow all your commandments. We love only you. Not worshiping the things of this world. We love our neighbor freely, not desiring for ourselves something they possess us. Accept these offerings, we pray and teach us to be generous, giving fully of ourselves that we may truly be the body of Christ in this world. The most gracious and loving God, we also pray for your blessings of these two boxes and cleaning market for the missions of the church. We pray for the hurting children and their families whose lives will be impacted by these boxes. And the contents we pack with love. We pray especially that through this gift and bucket, the hearts of the children and their families will be open to your love and the message of your grace through Jesus Christ. Holy living God, bless us and bless the whole world with thankfulness and peace. For you are the giver of all good gifts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us continue to pray for our family's friends. We have come before you, God, with our gratitude for all that you have done for us through this Holy Spirit. We are seeking your loving presence and your helping hands in this time of prayer for our families and friends and our community. Holy God, you have come to us first and shown us your love and grace first. And by the love and grace, you have saved us and called us to live our lives for your kingdom missions. With the confidence God's children, as God's children and followers of Christ, we trust your promise of healing and renewing and have faith in your mighty power of life giving and life saving grace. So we praise your holy name and lift up our prayers and desires as we pray for our families and friends. God of all mercies, have mercy on us. We lift up our families and friends, Viola Hazelwood, Nancy Bridgeport, and Ackerson, Rachel Wilkinson, Frank Warren, Charles Vickers. Especially who suffer and struggle from physical difficulties and spiritual challenges. We believe that you are, you are good and kind to the little. You are a merciful and healing God for the sick. And you give strength to the weak. So God, we seek your unfailing love upon your people. Send your spirit upon all of them and transform their troubles into joy and thanksgiving. Heavenly Father, we lift up your daughter and our sister, Leona, to you this morning. God, you know her by name, and, and you know everything she needs. So, Father, although we do not know what and how you would do for her, we ask that you would meet her in person and keep her secure in your comforting hands with peace and provide what she needs. Lord, we also offer our prayers for those who are in need of your special care, special attention, your sharpening wisdom and healing power as they recover from surgeries and treatments. Tommy Hyde, John Spencer, Brenda Ackley, Joyce Affected, Tommy Ackerson, and Pastor Stan. God, protect all of your people and give them strength and patience as they move forward. Help them to experience your loving presence and being covered with your unceasing grace. Holy God, we need you. We need your wisdom and help every day and every moment. We seek your face at our homes, workplaces, and in our relationships. God bless us and be with us. Now let us send ourselves and take a step forward, our gracious and faithful God, 
and seeking for his comfort in his loving grace in silence. Here on earth by saying, Our Father, the Lord in heaven, come to be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil, that thy name is the kingdom. Thank you. 